Oh baby, everybody, and welcome back to Words with Wayman. I am your host, as always, Matt Wayman. Thank you so much for tuning in. Support us on the interwebs. Words with Wayman on Twitter. Words with Wayman on Facebook. We are back. A little spicy part one. St. Louis uh, comedian and uh, Funny Bone Showcase producer, comedian Max Price. Thank you for coming out and joining us. Thanks for having me. Excited to do it. Yeah, I wanted to get you out. Uh, you've been super sweet and put me on a bunch of your shows, um, so I just wanted to come out and kind of talk to you. How did you get into uh, the comedy stuff? Well, I mean, just as most, uh, you know, grew up watching comedy specials. Um, always thought it was a fantastic art form, you know, always wanted to... Uh, try it myself. As a kid, I always wrote jokes and mm -hmm. stuff. Obviously, they were terrible, but always um, thought it was just a um, fun, uh, fun way to uh, write. Cause I always liked writing as a kid. Like yeah. I always loved. Like I, w I, when I was younger, I wanted to be a novelist, and okay. you know, or and then just I went through different like phases of what I like to write, and I just always loved writing, and then. When I discovered comedy, I just uh, it kind of uh, was very becoming to me as a uh, as a form of uh, writing. And uh, when I moved to St. Louis, I had a uh, friend that started going up to the open mic at the Funny Bone. He no longer nice. does it, but um, he was you know doing it a few times, check it out, and I heard about him doing it, and it kind of just gave me the courage to do it myself so i told him i want to do it he brought me up with him one time and that was nice uh, of him yeah yeah help me yeah it's <laughs> it's funny that like the person who helped me get started no longer does it a lot of um, yeah a lot of people i've started with have since quit right and uh and so uh it was uh one of those things that i the first time i did it as soon as i stepped on stage and kind of got those uh preemptive butterfly feelings yeah. out of the way and i you know I, after i got my first laugh finally it was nice it's just uh addicting you know you it's do. just you just like you just kind of realize after especially when you get your first laugh and like the first time you make a room full of people uh laugh a lot luckily for me uh there was a a huge crowd like it was one like it was it was my first crowd. time yeah it was crazy because like it was uh my first time ever doing an open mic it was i mean for an open mic like it was almost <laughs> completely full that's awesome it was insane i couldn't like and you're like at this at is time, comedy right this well, is what it's like? yeah and that's the crazy well that's the thing is that like that because that was my first time i was like oh all right like Comedy's this is awesome easy. yeah exactly <laughs> i was like oh this is great like did you do well did you do pretty good the first time i did decent like nice. i didn't i didn't like destroy but yeah. i didn't bomb you, you know? gotta laugh i got i got uh, a few good laughs nice. uh, i did have a lot of friends there too which uh, i think helped a lot but um but what's funny is that yeah so from then on and then actually probably two more times after that that i did it it was like really really packed and so, so I'm just thinking, so I'm just like, oh man, yeah, this comedy thing is great. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. And then, and now you like, you go and then you're like, if there's like 15 people being honest, you're like, yes, we're yeah. having a show. You know? So you came out hot. So yeah, you so, saw like the best uh, part about comedy. I think, um, I think that, that helped a lot. Cause I noticed now so many, uh, beginners get there and people will do it for their first time. And there's like. 12 people in the audience yeah. and they're like not feeling the show at all so then you know which i mean they're they're obviously starting out they're not going to be that good anyway but when you already are going up to a crowd that is just Pissed. like yeah like they're just just like why are you even here you I know feel like, like you should have to start like that i feel like the people that do well right away don't really realize how tough comedy is going to be and that was my problem starting out was that my first few times going up there was a large crowd, and they were super into the show. They were just pretty much laughing at anything. Mm -hmm. And so my first, like, three times going up, I actually did, like, really well for a first-timer, you know? And, um, and, and then, like... Spoiled and then, you. Exactly, exactly. Then you go to and other then, open mics where it's just comedians. And then, and then, so, like, I've got it in my head, like, from the start that, like, this just garbage that i'm writing is actually good oh and then boy. i'm just i continue writing like that and yeah. then as time goes on i'm you know going to these open mics and you know the obviously you're not gonna have a crowd that big and that into the show every time and i'm starting to notice that i these jokes are like failing miserably yeah. and i'm like and i see other comics that are you know uh more seasoned and been doing a long time they're <coughs> 
<clears throat> really good. And, you know, I see how uh, much better writers they are than yeah. me. And actually, you know, making the crowds laugh when I'm, you know, when I'm not. And, um, of course, you know, over time I um, just kind of realized that the way I was writing was uh, awful. <laughs> and yeah, so you had uh, to, like, so go like, through and it. I think, and you know what is that I think – I am actually kind of happy that happened in the beginning, though, because I feel like if I, if I had gone up to a very small crowd and and just like bombed completely, like I, maybe I would have been like, oh, I'm not good at this and never, yeah, and never tried it again. And that's what it's I true. noticed. I noticed that a lot now is that so many comics will come and do it for the first time, and it's a small crowd. They're not into the show, and they they do you know pretty bad, and then they just completely give up you know yeah and i feel like uh there's a lot of people that they just kind of kept up with it and uh you know kind of got the hang of it and realized that oh it does you know it does take practice but you really do over time start to become a better writer yeah um, and then that but they just never really it's tough though i mean you're you're exactly right i feel like you, they're that kind of rethinks how I originally thought about it. Because I'm more like, if you do well the first time, then you're spoiled, and then like you're going to think that's what comedy is, and all the open mics are going to be so much harder because you did well the first couple times. But I do think that you're right, that you need like that, something to chase after that. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Else. It's like, you, yeah, you want to, you know, it's kind of, you know, to be get a, get a, to get addicted to something, you gotta have a good high the first time. You yeah. know, if you if you try a dr you know if you try a drug for the first time and you it, it's awful, you're like, oh, I'm never gonna want to do that terrible. again. You know, but like if you do a you know you do a drug and you get a great high, you're like, man, yeah. I gotta keep doing that. You know, and I think I think yeah, I think you're right. Like I think you know sometimes you can get spoiled, but at least at least you keep going, and then from there you kind of figure out that you were you know. Uh, a shitty writer need mm -hmm. to start. Um, well, I'm sure there's correlation material. with that because you play piano as well. I mean, was there something? How did you? Um, I just played piano because my parents made me. Oh, really? <laughs> really? Cool. Yeah. Like more parents should make their kids do stand up <laughs> at like a super young age. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh man, that, was, Which would that be would be terrifying. That would be awful. <laughs> that would be. Th can you imagine open mics? With there's there's a kid open mics in L.A. We're like, really? yeah, we're like little kids go up and stuff, and oh, some of them are pretty good, you know. If they're <laughs> I wonder how many of them like their parents are writing there. Oh, I'm sure. For I'm sure that's a pretty just like <laughs> sad dad material performed by a seven year old kid. <laughs> My mom drinks too much wine. <laughs> So you do. Um, you said that you had moved here before you got into like doing the f the, the comedy and stuff. Where'd you move from? Um, well, I'm originally from San Diego. Nice. Um, I move. I've lived all over the country. Really, I've moved about 15 times yeah. in my life. Um, yeah, I've never lived military kid or two. something. No, <laughs> I get. <laughs> I'm sure, you get that. I mean, that's yeah, all, all the time. <laughs> um, more just. Uh, Kind of a long story, but basically mm -hmm. just never stayed in one place uh, very long. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to get into that. Definitely. But uh, basically, I've lived in uh, Southern California, cool. Indi uh, Indianapolis, um, which I, not too long ago, did my first uh, show in yeah, uh, it's Indianapolis. Yeah, a hip old town. Really cool, yeah, which yeah, was a cool place fun. to go back to. Because I, I hadn't even been back there since I lived there. And yeah. It was really cool to go back and then do a show, which was an awesome city to yeah. do comedy. Where'd you go way. up at? Uh, Morty's. Okay. Um, yeah, it was I haven't done that one. Oh man, it was, it's a blast. It's what's what's awesome about Morris is that it's inside an old Mexican restaurant. Cool. And it still has uh, it's <coughs> two levels though. Nice. And so there's a really awesome balcony, but like yeah. they kept the same structure and like format. Like it still has uh, like the outside of it has is like that yeah. like old like why however you expect like a m Mexican castle looking yeah. like you know kind yeah, of like yeah. how, I don't even know how to describe it but. Yeah. Um, it's awesome. Then you go in, and it's got that um, just really cool like uh, design on the railing, you know. Um, and you go up, and uh, the balcony just surrounds the the stage, and you know they still have like you know Mexican artwork, and um, cool. It is really a, a cool. That's cool comedy spot. summed up in one little nugget of just like performing comedy inside of an old Mexican restaurant. Yeah, basically, you know? it's what we're all doing. It's like what is, it's like shows that you'd never that you people wouldn't even believe were real if they didn't like right. see them. And then those are those. It's a lot of times those are shows that end up being the most fun because mm -hmm. like it's, it's it's almost like almost because you don't 
uh, exp- like you're going oh, yeah. with very low expectations, yeah. you know? Because, like, I'd heard about that before. I go, and they're like, oh, Maury's, yeah, it used to be a Mexican restaurant. I'm yeah. Like, oh, what the fuck am we I We did a in show here? in Lawrence that's in the basement where they used to have dog fights in the basement where you're actually below the crowd. So, like, you're in the pit, and the, ho- and the crowd is all around you. Oh, wow. And it's awesome. It's that's like a amazing. Fun, yeah, it's like a fun show. And yeah. then, But, like, right before you go up on stage, you're like, hey, just so you know, like, they used to fight dogs in here, so good luck. <laughs> Dude, <that's laughs> if you do bad, they bring them back out. <laughs> they do bad, they uh, bring the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's the thing is though, is that I think a lot of times if um, you go into those shows with really low expectations, and then you you real like it ends up being amazing. And then yeah. like, I've had shows where I we thought it was gonna be amazing. Like I did a show at uh, an amphitheater mm-hmm. in Muncie, Indiana. And I'm thinking that, uh, like, I saw pictures of it, and it's just this amazing, like, ballroom, just, like, huge. And then it ended up being, like, one of the worst shows I've ever Crazy. done. Crazy. It yeah, it's, uh, there's something, I mean, there's a, there's a lot to be said about, you know, your expectations going in. Yeah, absolutely. But, um, anyways, I tra- trailed way off. Uh, so, I lived in Indianapolis, and then uh, I lived in uh, Arkansas for a time. Uh, I lived in New York, and then... Where's your favorite place out of all the ones that you lived, do you think? That's really hard to say. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, I would have to, I would have to say, uh, you know, I miss home. Like, I miss San Diego. Yeah. You know, it's everything about, you know, the place. Just the weather is amazing. It's a hip little town. They got Ballast amazing. Point out there. They got a bunch of cool little microbreweries out there. Oh yeah, my um, yeah, my uh, my cousin is actually a uh, master brewer hey. in uh, L.A. And cool. uh, he uh, he wins. Yeah, he, like every year he wins awards. Like no. cool. Best IPA. Nice. Um, yeah, it's uh, so I always try that when I go out there. But yeah, I um, uh, I love you know just especially because you know most like the high majority of all my family's out there too. That mm-hmm. helps a lot. You know, I love uh, I love my family and uh, I love going out there to see them. Um, I love you know I love the beach. I love uh, the weather and everything. Um, I, but yeah, but then but then like I, but then there's uh, oh yeah awesome, definitely for sure but. But then, you know, I actually, when I first moved to St. Louis, wasn't a huge fan. But honestly, yeah. now it's, you know, it uh, it definitely, like, it definitely goes on you. You know, you, there's, yeah. uh, th- everything is way cheaper out here for yeah. one. Uh, there's a lot of, actually, like, if you really just kind of do your research, there's a lot of fun stuff to do out here and th- mm-hmm. that's free. Yeah. And, um, you know, now they have a son, you know, it's a way better place to raise a kid. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of uh, good things. Life. Yeah, definitely. There's How does that, um, do you think, affect your comedy being a dad? Do you think? It, you know, I was actually just having this conversation with my uh, son. a couple no. of <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so let me tell you about how you affected my comedy. You know, you can't talk back yet. Um, I was having this conversation with, as, as obvious, I mean, just as it is with, would with anyone, as much more difficult having a son has made my life in general mm-hmm. it actually uh helped my comedy career an insane amount a lot of people said steve harvey was a big one that said that i honestly i don't think i would not to say that i'm you know some like you know famous professional touring headliner or anything but i don't think i would be where i'm at in comedy right now mm-hmm. if i had a son because uh, well, just for one, uh, about seventy percent of my material is about my kid. Yeah, and like at least as my like go-to jokes, my solid as far as my the solid mati- bag jokes. Are good <laughs> yeah. Thanks. My uh, <laughs> as far as my solid material goes, uh, a very large portion would be definitely um, uh, my jokes about my kid. You know, and um, but also just how much having a, having a son. Uh, taught me to work harder at everything. Like before, mm-hmm. before I had a kid, you know, um, I still lived at home. Uh, I wasn't really, you know, uh, doing. You know, I wasn't really motivated to do anything. I didn't, you know, like I had started comedy, but I wasn't, you know, putting in a hard time to write and uh, focus and, you know, uh, read and, you know, practice my material and do what it takes to, you know, get to that next level in comedy, you know, I was just more just having fun with it, even though I, you know, I said, I thought I was serious about it. And then once I had my son and it was like, the less free time that I actually had, the more I learned to spend that free time. Constructively. uh, Yeah. And, um, focused and using it, uh, you know, well, and yeah, I think, um, 
there's definitely something to be said about the harder you have it, the um, the harder you know it makes you actually work, and and because of that, you you progress way more mm-hmm. because you're learning to. Um, you know, work with your circumstances. Yeah, because you're a younger guy, what, you're 23? Yes, 23. So, and you, I mean, you're already producing shows out at the Funny Bone, which is, I mean, for a young kid, pretty awesome. How did, th- how did that kind of come about? Um, well, I guess uh, kind of coming off of what well, I say, you know, once I had my son, I started working way harder. Uh, and uh, once I started doing that, I got more recognition at the Funny Bone through... Um, like by uh, Charlie Winfrey and Tim Convey, who mm-hmm. are already uh, well into the uh, scene and good friends with the manager, Matt, yeah. Tommy Bone. And they noticed uh, that I was progressing at a fast rate. And they mentioned that to him and uh, t- tried to talk to him about getting me some weeks uh, hosting, you know. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he listened to him and he gave me some weeks. And nice. uh, luckily for me, they... Uh, it went really well, and I spent a lot of time at the Funny Bone, uh, helping up, helping out with um, anything they really needed. Yeah, um, you know, just kind of uh, doing what I could, and I spent a lot, had a lot of you know FaceTime there, and and so I, you know, kind of became friends with Matt, and uh, I help, I started, he started uh, asking me for, you know, for my advice for you know comics to use on certain shows. Yeah. And, uh, I started giving him um, names of you know the comics to use for emceeing and mm-hmm. stuff. And whenever I did, uh, he noticed that everybody that I suggested started doing really well for you for once. So yeah, that was know, awesome. I, I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, by the way, uh, <laughs> I suggested you. You did really well, and uh, he you know s- noticed that you know he could trust me to. Um, which is tough a lot of the time for yeah, yeah for to comedy do, clubs to do certain to- uh, to do certain things like that, like suggest comics and. He knew that I had an eye for, you know, what comics are, you know, doing really well. And yeah. um, I'd helped him since I did that. Um, and I had been, for a little while, I was running an independent showcase uh, called Barfly Comedy with uh, a friend of mine, Ryan Reese. Nice. And he knew I was doing that, so he knew that I, you know, knew about running a show. And so uh, he just pulled me aside one day and uh, told me that he wanted to be to start running a showcase on Wednesdays so they didn't, you know, uh, have to close down the club on Wednesdays. You know, want yeah. to keep it open, keep making money. And so he asked me to um, be in front of because, you know, he'd, he you know, been able to see that I was pretty decent at getting people out to yeah, a show. Yeah, which you know, is tough. And yeah. And uh, luckily, I've been lucky enough to have been able to get a g- pretty decent amount of people out to sh- uh, shows, you know. And... Um, asked me if I would be able to start running a showcase and there and you know I agreed to it because it's a great opportunity and um, so let's see with now let's see that started in last week of August we're pretty much in what the last week of February what's that's about what six months yeah so yeah we're about in our sixth month of it and it's awesome uh, it's been it's been fun yeah um, definitely I've done uh, it a couple times super fun show thank you thank you um, it's been challenging at times of for course. Sure. Um, people don't realize how tough booking and I mean you host a lot of the times too so that mm. like adds another thing to it yeah I uh, definitely yeah I uh, book the comics do the advertising and promoting and um, you can you only know, get the friends out so many times bef- and friends always say they're going to come out and never come out exactly too. oh yeah that's definitely a, a tough one um, I was lucky enough to have a pretty good system for a while, I I drove Uber for a nice. uh, a decent amount of time, and honestly, uh, dur- our best crowds came during my times that I was driving Uber because I would just hand out. I would <laughs> literally like. I mean, Matt would give me stacks of free passes. Yeah. And I would just set them in my car, and everybody that I picked up and dropped off, I'd just buy, hey, here's free pass to the Funny Bone. Come out on a Wednesday. Yeah. And people were coming. Like people were actually like. I would, uh, especially the ones that I, like, if I did, like, pretty long drives, I would, like, talk to them, I would joke with them, and if I was able to make them laugh, that was a really good um, breaking uh, point, like, an icebreaker to be like, hey, by the way, like, I do, you know, I don't just crush from the front seat. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) (laughs) you know, that that rear view mirror. Yeah. And, and, uh, (laughs) and, 
Uh, but it really, and it actually worked. Like I actually, uh, I mean, I handed out tons of free passes because um, there was a while that I was, uh, I was doing it, you know, um, all weekend. Yeah. And I would, you know, give um, probably, you know, like up to 40 rides a day, you know. Crazy. Um, at some point, you know, working long hours. Yeah, that's good and face give time. Out ton- yeah, and t- give out tons of passes, and people were actually coming. You know, they people were using them, trying mm-hmm. them in. I was, I was seeing. It's a young, hip crowd. They're like people that take Uber a lot of the times, right. or and, like and younger people. And that was people. the thing is that, like, a lot of, yeah, a, a lot of time, a lot of people that uh, were, you know, taking Ubers were, you know, people generally my age, or, you know, maybe like, you know, in like their uh, early 30s or something. Yeah. You know, so they're a good crowd. They, you know, they uh, have good. You know, this is a humor most of the time, and um, they were uh, actually coming out to the shows, and that helped a lot. And then uh, Uber just kind of plummeted. Um, just uh, everybody and their mother started driving. Yeah, everybody started Uber, driving, yeah. And there weren't enough requests to go around. just wasn't worth yep. the time, so I stopped doing it. And uh, it's been really hard to kind of find ways to get that many passes out again. Yeah, and get FaceTime. And Everybody hears that. There's an apocalyptic rainstorm going on outside. So if you hear anything in the background, there's just a tornado about to come in. No big deal. Everybody. But um, so uh, we're definitely looking at uh, different ways. You know, we're uh, taking a short break. We're on a, a little month, uh, one month break at the yeah. moment. We'll be back in uh, last week of March. Yeah. Check it out if anybody, if for our St. Louis listeners out there. Oh, yeah. March 22nd uh, nice. is when we'll start up again. Uh, we have a funny bone Westport. Yeah, it's 7.30. 7.30. Is start time. And Before we get out of here for this episode, cause these things go pretty quick, um, what advice, uh, how, many, how, for how long have you been doing comedy? It's like uh, three, years. three years. So for somebody that's just starting or wants to try for the first time, what advice would you give them? Don't do it, is what a lot of people say. <laughs> 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 it's like, just stop, just quit. Uh, that's, uh, I guess th- that's decent advice. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, you know that's a, that's a very tough question because there's one piece of advice does not work for everyone because True. everybody goes into yeah. it so differently like i i personally went into it thinking like oh i'm going to be famous next year you know yeah, like i went into sure. it super headstrong um i think for for those who have are very uh very confident in themselves uh almost <laughs> narcissistically uh, confident uh take a step back and be humble and uh take a good look at the scene and how comedy works before you dive in that's good um because you'll probably end up doing or saying something that you really that's wish. Really good advice. Uh, I, yeah. I definitely would suggest that. And then for those, but then you have those who go into it thinking like, "I'm a piece of shit. I'm just gonna try it because, whatever, you know." Yeah, I the guess. two opposite ends. Yeah, uh, you have people who go in who have no confidence in themselves, even though they actually have. Good material. Yeah, yeah, they actually for like I've seen multiple first timers uh, who've come up and f- do really good for a first timer. You know, like they actually understand at least the general concept of how to write a joke, like a like good structure. You know, mm-hmm. good joke structure. Even though you know it's not like grade A material, they still at least understand the structure and yeah. they can build from there. And um, they. Well, but as I was mentioning earlier, they'll go up to a crowd that's just not feeling the show, and they think that that's how it's going to be every time, and then they just don't come back, and I really wish that I could see them again and be like, hey, no, you actually know what you're doing. Like, keep going. And then there's people that come up there, and I'm like, Oh, I wish you would have quit after the first time. Because they, you know, they, they, uh, you know, those overly confident yeah, people. maybe that's advice too for like comedians to be like, if you see somebody that for the fir- go for the first time, even if they did bad, but you see something, just go up and be like, hey, good set or hey, like, I good try. That's you know? something I've I try to do that within the last year is something I've learned to do because as someone, I uh, you know I c- I I help run the open mic on mm-hmm. Tuesdays yeah. also, um, and being there every week, I have noticed so many. There's been so many times that I've seen comics who come up. And um, they, you know, they get a crowd who's like, like 
they're overly giving in their yeah. laughs, you know, and you know they'll tell some bullshit jokes that are just like overly misogynistic yeah, or yeah. like borderline racist jokes yeah. and stuff that like do well because the crowd is drunk <laughs> and thinks, you know, you know because they you know they like Daniel Tosh and shit, sure. you know, so they you know hear that and they laugh. And then that comic thinks that they're really good, and they come oh, yeah. up and they continue writing with in that Trash way. Trash material. And yeah, and they're just like overly confident. And uh, I've noticed lots of these comics come. You know, they they hear about you know the showcase that I run. They come up to me and they're like, "Hey, uh, you know, just like, hey, you should put me on your showcase and stuff." And I'm that's no, not how no, this works. that's not how this works <laughs> at all. <laughs> and I what is so funny is I just recently had someone who. Uh, I'd never seen before in my life uh, come up to me and um, ask me to book him on an, my showcase. And I was like, I, I don't even know who you are. What's yeah, your name? Who are you? And uh, he asked me to watch his set at the open mic because, uh, quote, end quote, it was going to be the best five minutes that I'd ever seen in my life. Oh, goodness. And what do you know? He starts out with a, this is my first time. It's going to be a lot like my first time having sex. Goodness, uh, we all did that joke oh for two weeks. Dude, <laughs> it, I just immediately put my head on the table. And then he goes into some bit about... Um, that respecting about women. Trump, about oh about yeah. Trump and like Ivanka. You've only been doing this for two Melania weeks. Might as well take on the big issues. <laughs> exactly. Everybody wants I to be a storyteller. Oh right? yeah, <laughs> like the yeah, uh, definitely start your career off w uh, <laughs> by completely polarizing <laughs> the room with, a yeah. with political material, <laughs> and uh, that's. You'd be shocked how many people actually. I, do I just, I just, why I, I didn't listen to more than about a minute no. and a half. I couldn't do it anymore. And you didn't even need to when he told you that you already knew exactly right. knew it was going to happen. Right. Oh, I. And not only that, but also the fact that uh, to do our showcase because the showcase that I'm running is uh, largely, uh, a partly, uh, largely to uh, help MC level comedians build up a feature set definitely because, uh, that's why we're you know anybody that comes on to the show has to have at least 15 minutes of solid material and we're letting them do that 15 minutes and if they think they can do it uh spread their wings and do 20 yeah. and then from there uh start spreading their wings and do 25 kind of expand and we want to give because there's only um after the host there's only uh Sometimes four, but usually just about three people after the host mm -hmm. on a showcase. And that's so that these comics can learn to uh, expand on their material and, yeah. uh, and you know, just stretch and breathe, you know, and uh, learn how a feature set works so yeah. that they, you know, so that they can move to the next level. Because, it's you know, there's, there's very few shows... Uh, around where you can do that kind of set, and it's it, true. you can even practice that, you know, and uh, they need somewhere they practice. So you have to at least be at that level and be ready to expand on that and take it to the next level. So these comics who come up and and I always feel bad because you know, like I, it's not that there's lots of comics uh, in the area that I think are good comics for how much material they have. Yeah, it's just that you know we're this isn't about uh, amateurs becoming MCs. This is about you know. This is about uh, MC having been an MC for a while and b being ready to get bumped up to the feature level. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And so uh, that's kind of what we look for. And I I really like that about the show uh, the showcase that I run is that uh, I know uh, a lot of um, M MC level comedians. That are that I think uh, can are on their way to featuring. Of I course. like being able to give them that opportunity to uh, learn uh, or just get experience with a feature level set. It's and true. then every once in a while, uh, I'll see comedians that I think are just about ready to be an MC. And what I'll do actually is. Um, I'll step down from uh, hosting the show and I'll let them do it nice. so that they can get that practice in hosting. And then I know, you know, I'm not scared to put them on the show because I know they have good material and I know yeah. they'll do well and they get that uh, experience hosting. And then, and then when that happens, then I uh, put myself as a uh, feature length 
uh, slot on there, so then I get my own practice nice, with feature yeah. length ma- um, material. So it kind of it's kind of a win win. Yeah. In a lot of situations, it makes money for the club. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. awesome. I think that's a good place to leave off on this one. Before we get out of here, do you want to? Uh, you just want to plug your social media stuff, or uh, you already plugged the Funny Bone Showcase. Um, they can see you out there on Tuesdays too at the open mic. Um, but where can everybody find you on the on the interwebs? Uh, I, on Facebook, just Max Price, uh, spelled normally. Don't hit them up asking for shows. Uh, yeah, don't do that, uh, please. Uh, well, and it's not so much, okay, I have no problem with people, um, uh, the best, like, recently I had the best way someone asked me, I had someone, uh, who I didn't know, uh, hit me up, I guess he was a Springfield comic. Nice. And, uh, after I was just, I was getting so tired of people just, like, almost practically demanding that Mm -hmm. I put them on their show, (laughs) having no respect about it. That's what bothers me is when people have such a shitty attitude about it. Yeah. Uh, the best way that you can ask to get put on a show, if you're a new comic, by the way, um, be very polite in asking for one, and don't just ask straight to be put on the show. Uh, send a video, either send yeah. a video of your stuff, or if you know that that person is going to be at a show or an open mic that you're going to be at, politely ask them to watch your set, yeah. uh, and then have them give you feedback t- and tell you what they think, yeah, and that if they like you, maybe consider you for an upcoming show mm-hmm. uh, that they're doing. And then drop that fifty dollars on the ground directly <laughs> in front of you, and exactly. Walk away. And then uh, quick handy in the bathroom, uh, <laughs> just for extra good luck. No, but really, um, and just you know, just don't be, be polite. Don't, don't be overly confident because be a person. It, yeah, exactly. Bookers hate. When someone is aggressive or overly confident about it, uh, just, you know, be polite, just uh, yeah. be, you know. Don't blow yeah. it. Get it. Yeah, just let know? them, you know, let them uh, uh, come to you or just, you know, ask them to watch something. And then, you know, have them, ask them to tell you what they think. Nice. And if, you know, if we see it, we're good. You know, there's no need to be aggressive. Like, if we think you're good, then we'll put you on. If not, yeah. then it's not, you know, happening right now. Maybe try again later. That's true. But that's how... Um, and the w- that's the worst, w- that's the best way to get a co- booker to not book you is yeah. when they... For know, sure. Because, you know, it's already annoying enough when you have so many people. Oh, yeah. Uh, you are you. choosing between a lot of people. Before. But, uh, yeah, so you can find me at Max Price. Facebook, uh, you can find me uh, at Max Price is me on Instagram or the MaxiPad on fa- uh, Twitter. Nice. And if you got feedback for us, just like I said, or you want to send us money or give us handies in the bathroom, hit a w- at Words with Wayman, Twitter, Facebook. Let us know. Thank you all so much for listening. We'll be right back with part two with comedian Max Price. Yeah, sure.